Welcome to episode 107 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies, plus tips, apps, and gear. I'm your host, Dave Ginsburg, and my co-host is back, Warren Sklar. How you doing? What's going on? I am back. I'm trying to think why I wasn't around last week. You, you had too many people at your... Oh, I had people, that's right, at the, 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 the beach house, yeah. All right. And then I, then I, and I, then I ended up recording two episodes in one week, so... Yeah, I, I was a little, 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 little crazy, but uh, uh, my thanks to, to uh, Joe Kiesel, and he, he came on, and we had a great discussion about making iPad your uh, uh, full-time device, and then my friend uh, Bob Fairburn. So we had, you got two, you got two bonus episodes in one week, but so uh, we, my, body, my body wasn't even uh, cold. Yeah. Just, so, uh, but you're back. So, so nice. But back. I am so thrilled that uh, we, uh, we have a, we have a great guest this week, Mr. Jeff Gamet. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing great. And uh, it, it's great to see both of you. And thanks for inviting yeah. me on. Absolutely. I've been meaning to invite you on the show for like forever. And, you know, we're at 107 episodes now. So, uh, and I'm going to go back. I think we, we met for the first time at Mac stock. And I think a lot of people mm-hmm. I've, I've met at Mac stock and have lots of great friends now. And, uh, and you, you of course are one of them on that list and appreciate, uh, appreciate that. And you, uh, uh, helping us out with stuff and I'm glad you're going to be here, but we'll talk a little bit more about you. Uh, once we uh, get through all the stuff we got to talk about today, we got a pretty full show here, lots of news this week and, uh, some uh, apps to talk about. And of course, beta because, uh, Warren loves beta. <laughs> oh, we all we all have beta now. Now I'm not but you, alone. But you, you live in beta, so. Well, no, no. And no. I always make fun of you for doing that. So, but uh, let's uh, go ahead and just dig right into some of the news here, and then we'll. And uh, I've got some uh, news stories towards the end about all the beta stuff that's been uh, released this week. Um, first story was uh, there was a bug actually found in Apple Music, an app bug that actually was reportedly causing sporadic b- battery drain. And I'm like, hmm, I, my my 11 Pro Max, I had started noticing a little bit of battery drain. Uh, uh, especially since I was using, uh, uh, been using the music app uh, fairly frequently with my home pods and my Sonos Move, and uh, uh, so uh, the, the article here and, and um, Apple Insider, uh, it was following the release of 13.4.5.1. Uh, some users had reported that the Apple's music app would appear to be causing steep battery drain and many reports claimed that the drain happened regardless if the music app was not being used yeah what a surprise uh the music app seems like it's always being used because i always when i go in my car and, and it connects to bluetooth it always starts playing music which i don't want it to do so um that, jeff what did you think about this when i saw the article my first thought was oh now i get why my battery is draining so fast yeah. on my iphone and i went and checked in uh the the battery settings Yep. Negligible for for the music app for me, which I found to be yeah. surprising. Um, so it turns out my real problem is Mobile Safari and Tweetbot, which uh, is probably more an indication of how I'm using my phone. Yeah, that that is true. Uh, same here, but I'm I am using the music app, so I'm hoping that they did they did some res- they re- resolved this, but. Uh, uh, Warren, have you uh, seen anything? Well, you don't see this because you're on iOS 4. No, no, I just laughed. I laughed at them because I, I had, uh, you know, a million other problems on my own, but not that one. Yeah, because um, it's 14. <laughs> yeah. But there's, um, I think today they released the gold master of... Well, we'll get uh, there. We'll, we'll get there. Well, but this will tie into the fixing of that issue okay. that people are having. So I'm just going to, you know, slide Go that ahead. in. Right. Yes, there's gonna soon. It's gonna be fixed if you're still having that problem. So hold tight. So was that a spoiler? Spoiler, kinda. yes, yes, yeah, yes kind of. Because I, I, I got, I got us a lead into all the beta discussion here. So <laughs> as you start to see the notes, <laughs> that's why I wanted to less, less of a beta discussion, more of a fix for this all particular right. issue that you might be having. That that is true. All right. There is going to be a release. Yeah, we'll talk about 13.6 uh, uh, shortly here. Um, next story. This was an iMore.com. Uh, consumers have spent over $17 billion through the App Store in the quarter two of 2020. That is all-time high. I wonder why, because everybody's in quarantine and wants to buy apps and download things, I would think. Um, as they, they said mobile app usage in itself is just ha- at an all-time high right now. Uh, according to a new report, uh, this is from uh, analytics from App Annie, um, that... Uh, it just, just downloads have just increased 
exponentially. It's just crazy. Even Google Play uh, on the Android side has been uh, uh, very busy. Uh, but uh, this is uh, this is impressive to see what what this is doing. And Apple is just happy to see more money coming in for them because th that's all going right into their thirty percent of the App Store. Uh, Warren, what do you think of this? Yeah, it's not much else to do. So people are, you know, they're they're grasping at straws. I, I'm I'm doing it too. I mean, you know, yeah, on me my uh, on my iOS device, I'm starting to look for things that I haven't done in a while because, uh, you know, we got the time. Um, not finding much so in the way of anything. You know, we've been doing this for a long time, and you know, by this time, yep. you and I and and. Uh, and and our guests, I'm sure, and everybody who's probably listening, you know, we have our collection. We we have a pretty good collection of what we like at this point. And there's was an influx of those apps coming out, you know, way way back. And you know, it's kind of hard for new things to come along uh, these days. So we we keep looking. It's not Quibi. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, <laughs> and, I, I, and I purposely avoided not putting that article in this week, uh, <laughs> just for that reason. We can yeah. mention it, but uh, but uh, what do you think about this, Jeff? I I think that it's a surprise that I've actually been buying so many apps that it pushed up Apple's uh, App Store stats that that high. <laughs> yeah, you, you must have been the big influ influencer. Of, of I, yeah, I'm sure it was all me. <laughs> it's what well, you know when. When you're at home and you suddenly have a lot more free time than you previously had, it's a lot easier to uh, to just tap by when you get a message from a friend saying, hey, uh, I'm trying out this cool app and I think you'd like it. Or someone sends you a message and says, I'm having a problem. Do you know how to do this thing in this app? And... You know, and my first answer would be no, I don't have the app. But, but no, of course I go buy the app, figure it out, and then send them a message. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, but yeah, uh, yeah, that's great. I mean, I'm glad to see App Store keeps going because that's that's important. Keeps uh, iOS growing, keeps uh, keeps keeps the environment going. So, um, next story. This was in our favorite place, the Mac Observer. Uh, Tom Hanks is actually thrilled that Greyhound, the movie, is coming out on Apple TV Plus. No, he really is, because uh, first at first Tom had said, uh, "Yeah, I'm not too happy. I wish it was in the theaters. It's not going to be a good experience." And Apple doesn't Apple does, didn't do a very good job with the sound. And then he he. he changed gears and had another interview the next day and says, Oh no, I'm absolutely thrilled about how Apple TV is going to be showing on my movie. And, and for the first time, but I, I'm kind of excited about it. I think this is great to have a, a major motion picture like this that was supposed to go out um, into the theaters is going to be uh, uh, the first time premiere for Apple TV. If anything, it's going to be a great thing for Apple and I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, and Tom Hanks, of course, one, one of the more amazing actors out there. And then and, uh, and, uh, Jeff, what do you think of this? Well, Tom, switching gears so quickly, it's, I, I would love to know what happened because Me Tom too. Hanks is one of those people that that comes across to me as nice and honest as anyone can possibly be. So if if he switched gears that quickly, my guess is that someone said, actually, Tom, hold on. We need to show you what we've done and explain all of this. And uh, and, and when he saw all of it, then he changed his mind. Um, but the other part of it is this is releasing on Apple TV. This is great for Apple. Ha having these feature movies that uh, that fall under their umbrella... I mean that adds a lot of street cred to Apple TV. Oh, big time. And uh, uh, the the other movie that they have, and I oh, I cannot remember the name of it. It's the the banker movie. Oh yeah, yeah. It's called the banker. I think. It there is. we go. See, that's why I'm having yeah. a hard time remembering it because yeah. the name describes it, and apparently my brain doesn't work right. <laughs> um, but yeah, they. I mean, they have these two movies. This is great. Absolutely. What do you think, Warren? Um, I like to think that Tim Cook made uh, 
a nice uh, phone call in the middle of the night to Tom Hanks and had had a conversation, um, the, saying uh, you know kind of a Godfather kind of situation. But um, <laughs> you know Tom Hanks uh, looks over and there's a horse's head in his bed and Tim Cook's uh, like hits her on the head and Tom's like ah, I gotta fix that. Yeah, um, I get. I get what he's, I mean, real quick, I, I get Tom Hanks's point. I mean, you're, you're an actor, you make a big budget film and, you know, you envision it being on a big screen, you, you know, hey, you want it on an IMAX screen if you can. I mean, that's that's what they do and that's why they do it. It's called a small screen for a reason. And, um, you know, when he came back yesterday or today to kind of, uh, kind of reiterate things, he was, I think it was more like, yeah, it would have been great to be on a big screen, but thank you, Apple, for letting this happen at all, because without this, it wouldn't even happen. And that, that's where he kind of backed up and said, you know, yeah. it's great that we could do this in this kind of time, because, you know, home streaming was, I think it was just kind of popped out when this started happening. If you, I think Trolls, the Trolls movie was the first one to do it. Right. And I think they kind of like, uh, they're like, you know, it, it was probably like a late night, like you know, executive meeting somewhere saying, what are we going to do? You know, movie theaters are closing and they're like, all right, you know, yeah. we're either going to put this out to people somehow or we're not. And they made that decision. And I think now, you know, it saved, it saved the industry a bit and uh, no, not completely, but it, it's better than nothing. I, I think it's yeah. the quote Tom gave. I think this is the beginning of a uh, a slow but big shift in the uh, the cinematic movie industry, and I, I think we're going to see more movies that are uh, are <coughs> photographed and edited and designed so that they can be on a big screen, but so that they also present well in a home theater situation. And we'll, exactly. we'll be seeing a lot more movies released as as either streaming first or uh, streaming and in theaters simultaneously, and and not in the the um, I don't want to say the cheap movie way, but you know, like in the in the B movie way, okay. but like first run. Uh, uh, high quality summer blockbuster type movies, you know, the, the, the real big budget stuff. Right. right? Yeah. I think we're going to see people, more movies uh, as a, as pay. a streaming option yeah. for that. Yeah. And people will pay, you know, I think I read people will pay like 30 or $40 to watch a, weren't they? I think there was a survey went out that they, they would pay like $40 to see a first run movie at home. Because well, that's still cheaper than taking your family yeah, to the theater. You, got, you start adding things up. It. Yeah. I mean, if you go to movies by yourself, maybe I not mean, so much. They're, but. They're, they're doing it right now with the drive-in, the drive-in theaters are all of a sudden becoming hot, popular things again, which people, they, they, there was a dying breed. I mean, uh, what was it? Blake Shelton has a, has a concert coming out. He's charging $116 a car load. So, uh, I mean, yeah. you get five, six people in the car, you divide that up, and you know, that's you know, next to nothing. So, um, And the audio uh, quality is no better. Better than the radio in your car. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the other thing. Unless they've changed things, I doubt it. Um, I think I was going to mention too with just online is uh, Hamilton. Obviously, was a big thing uh, on Disney Plus. They they didn't even announce how, how many people have have watched it over the last uh, the last week, but uh, and they aren't going to. They're going to wait until the until the or multiple the, times like me. Yeah, the profit results come out, and so they can they can really prove how how worthy Disney is of, of them uh, scoring this seventy five million dollar deal they they signed with uh, the production of Hamilton. So, I think it's an exciting space. I think, and I, and I talked about it last week uh, uh, on the episode uh, with uh, talking about Apple TV and content and all that stuff. And so, it's a, it's a it's an interesting topic, and I think I think we're definitely going to see more and more of this now with the way things are going with uh, with the COVID and the pandemic. So in the quarantine, I should say. But anyway, let's move on. Um, next topic was uh, Apple iPhone trade-in prices have been cut. Uh, this was on Mac Observer as well. Our friend Charlotte Henry, um, she uh, wrote a article here saying uh, there's a list here of all the, the prices have now dropped on some of these older iPhones that you trade in. So like the, the, the 10s Max, which I used to have, is now down 50 bucks. It was now it's at 450 dollars as an example. Uh, the 10R down to 270. 
drop thirty dollars. So there's a there's a whole list here on, on the site. We'll have a link in the show notes, of course. Uh, but yeah, prices are starting to drop a little bit on the old models. Uh, Jeff, what do you think on this? I think that well, first Charlotte is awesome. I just is. love her. She's the best. Uh, but on on the story, trading in your iPhone or your iPad, and and then getting this alert hey prices are coming down on what you can get for them what what yeah. that telegraphs to me is it was a really bad idea to trade in your device to begin with and now it's an even worse idea because apple is going to offer you so little for the device that well like in my case when i consider trading in an ipad pro to to get a new ipad pro and they told me what they would give me for it, $70. I laughed. I'm like, no, really? Yeah. And, and they said, no, yeah. $70. Um, wow. So even well, though it's a little more work, <laughs> yeah, s s sell it on eBay or Craigslist or something like that. Or what I ended up doing was just giving my old iPad to someone that needed it. There you go. Warren, your thoughts? Um, just advice actually is, um, and, and, um, it's, it's good advice when you hear rumors of a new device coming out, uh, and I've done this several times. If you go to some of the, uh, online trading sites like Gazelle and a couple of other, the other ones like that, um, those quotes stay pretty good for like 30 days. And, yeah. um, if you hear a rumor, if you have a thought that maybe you want to do it, get that quote soon because I've, I've, you know, I played the, uh, trade in lottery that way and actually won out where, you know, I, I think I put my watch up, uh, got a quote for it. And then when the new watch came out and dropped it, the, the, the quote went way down, but I was still good on that. Uh, initial yeah. quote so um so you know uh, if, if you if you can find a place that holds the quotes uh for you a little bit do it uh, as soon as you think you might want to do it if to, if there's a room or a new device yep all right let's uh next story uh this was in uh Mac Observer again, Andrew Orr, our other, our other good friend here, um, he uh, wrote an article about uh, the Logitech. Logitech has launched a new mouse and keyboards uh, for specifically for Apple devices. This is kind of the newest additions. This is their master series, the MX uh, series, the uh, the Bluetooth devices. Uh, they're beautiful keyboards and a really nice mouse too. Um, and give you a lot of a flexibility. And the only reason I wanted to bring this up is because these also work with the iPad uh, because of, as we know, uh, the iPad has uh, the touchpad and keyboard capabilities. Um, and the uh, only thing is that they're a little pricey. They're about $99. Uh, they're, they're, they're about $99 uh, uh, per device pretty much and uh there is a new uh, smaller keyboard blue teeth it was a k380 I, they just came out with a white version of it uh, i've got the blue one actually uh that's that one's cheap that's around 35 or 40 dollars so uh jeff what'd you think i love seeing options me too um because for me keyboards and pointing devices they're they're like shoes just because a pair of shoes is comfortable for me doesn't mean it, it'll be comfortable for you. So same thing applies to keyboards and pointing devices, even though you don't wear them, you need to have options so you can find the thing that works best for you. And I know a lot of people that just love the Logitech devices like that. And um, um, I, I'm not one of their keyboard users, but I've used some of their mice in the past and the, the ones that are ambidextrous, the, yep. those I liked. I'm left-handed, so. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so if you want to use a right-handed device, holy crap, Logitech makes some awesome stuff. If you want to use a left-handed device, your option's a little more limited. But yeah, they make good stuff. So uh, I'm, I'm happy to see more options coming out so that people can find the right gear for them. Absolutely. Any, any thoughts, Warren? Um, no, I saw a review on once on the uh, the MX3 laser mouse, uh, and it made me really want to get one. But you know, I have the uh, I have the you know the, the laptops with trackpad. I don't have I don't own a desktop. Right. Um, so I mean, my my thought on this is really, if you take an iPad Pro, put a hub on it, connect it to a monitor, get your Logitech uh, combo out. 
you know, that's looking pretty sweet, actually. If it, you know, if, mm-hmm. if you could, they, they might actually have. Um, I mean, so so the initial thought is, the mouse somehow has to recognize and accept the the the, the swipes uh, because that's basically everything on iPad OS at this point with the trackpad, right? It's uh, you know, swipe up, swipe down, swipe left. And I think I told you when uh, before the Magic Keyboard came out, I had a. Um, it might have it was a logitech but it had the uh it was almost like a magic mouse that had the uh glass top where i was able to do some of the swipes on the on the top of the mouse so i'm wondering if they incorporate all the gestures somehow into this uh, set if they're advertising it for ipad os which would be really cool yeah but it's a uh, pretty pretty much a lot uh, with uh, mac so it's going to probably be much more more ideal for mac users uh, than than an ipad but at least it's got you've got other options, but we've got our magic keyboards, so we love those. So, you know, I'm now that you bring it up from that perspective, I'm curious to see how many companies start coming out with really innovative keyboard, uh, trackpad combo devices for the iPad. Yeah, oh, absolutely, they, they should. I mean, they start, should start because more and more it could become a, a full time device. As we, oh, as I agree. About. So, um, uh, next story: uh, Mac Observer as well. Uh, which apps were spying on you on your I- I- iOS clipboard? Uh, this was quite a topic this last week or two. Um, we know uh, TikTok surprise was was one of them that was copying the contents of of your clipboard in iOS beta 14. It was when when it was uh, recognized. LinkedIn was another one which I was very surprised about. Uh, Microsoft is owned by them and. Uh, uh, but they could copy these things very easily, such as PIN numbers, credit card information, social security numbers, all that stuff uh, could happen. Um, and uh, there's a link here that actually uh, shows uh, some of the other apps that were out there as well. Uh, even I think Reddit uh, had the problem and others. Uh, there's a the link in the show notes here if you take a look at that. Uh, uh, Jeff, what did you think of this? I was a little, a little surprised, honestly. I, I, was, I was surprised. I was also quite appalled. That too. <laughs> I mean, there, there are certain apps where I expected to get the your clipboard has been copied notice. You know, like uh, like when I'm using Flipboard because it always checks to see if you have a URL in the clipboard, and uh, so that that one didn't surprise me. But yeah, a lot of other apps that were just like constantly grabbing the the clipboard contents. That was very uncool. And uh, um, there's a lot of companies that need to update their apps immediately because there's a lot of people that are going to start giving them really bad press if they don't. Absolutely. Uh, I can't agree with you more. Warren, what's your thoughts, Mr. Beta? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm a little less uh, harsh on these people, on these developers. I think... Uh, I think it was Reddit uh, said, you know, um, it's, we're going to fix it, but it, it's it's you know not as malicious as it sounds. It's we, we do it for um, th- there's reasons that they do it. One, I think one uh, one of them, I think TikTok initially said they did it because it cuts down on spam posts because they could see how many times people are posting. Um, I in my heart, I don't believe that these companies are doing anything sneaky with it i think it's possibly just lazy programming on a lot of parts and i think as technology especially apple who's really good at at doing this privacy things as they come up with new ways to (laughs) expose what the apps are doing more because that's apple's thing you know at, at this point they're saying ios is only as secure as the apps, and the best we can tell you at this point is everything we know that the app is doing, we're going to let you know to the point that you want to know. And if we tell you too much, you're going to yell at us too because, uh, you know, you don't want to keep telling us it's okay. But it's, um, you know, I don't think it's malicious. I, th- I think it's just, you know, the way things are programmed and um, maybe not TikTok. I'm a little concerned about that. But the other two, um, I really don't think it was, um, it was just something that, they just need to fix, and I think other, other. I think going forward, if a new app is released um, now and new app uh, update is out, and it has a problem, I think you know you're going to yell at the developers at this point because they know now now it's out there. But 
Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's malicious, to be honest with you. Okay. You know, by um, the time uh, iOS 14 rolls out, <clears throat> I want someone to have a clipboard of shame list up and running <laughs> so that we can keep track of all of the iOS apps that are needlessly accessing the clipboard. Yeah, give them, give them the four months to, to get their ducks in order with the, the, you know, whip their developers into shape. Um, you know, as I said, this is not going to be the last time something's going to be exposed by some programming or updating uh, on the operating system level. Um, it's just, you know, if you think of how much an app knows about what you're doing, it, you would your brain would explode because I mean I'm sure copying clip, uh, the clipboard on on like a TikTok or LinkedIn is like the least amount of like things you should be concerned about that that's what it's doing you just don't know it because it's you know we don't know it yeah all right uh, next uh, story um, Apple updated the iWork apps which uh, includes uh, Pages Keynote and Numbers um, they added uh, iBooks author translation uh, tra uh, the, the, uh, the iBooks author uh, iBooks author trans transition because it's being discontinued. Um, and they have included uh, YouTube and, and Vimeo embeds, and they did do these updates for iOS too. That's why I brought the article on here. Um, and uh, so it looks like now you can actually can play YouTube videos and uh, Vimeo videos right from within your documents, which is great. Uh, that's a nice new feature I like to see. Um, and you're able to do this all in uh, on iOS and as far and iPad OS as well. Um, and iPad OS is great with all three of these apps. I think I've, I've done plenty of editing with uh, them before, and I think it is really great. Uh, Jeff, what you think? Yeah, I love seeing the new features roll out. Yeah. And I do have... A, a little bit of a complaint. Okay. And when, when I looked at the the release note, just the basic information for the Mac versions of the iWork apps, it said that some of the features were Mac specific, and um, um, or maybe it was the other way. When I looked at it on iOS, it said some of the features were, were not available on iPad and iPhone, and. My first thought was, seriously, you guys gutted the iWork apps on the Mac several years ago for feature parity across all the devices, and now you don't have feature parity. Yep, that does sound familiar, because uh, Microsoft's done that plenty of times, too. Yeah, between, just between, very between frustrating. Mac and, and, and Windows. What do you think, Warren? And Microsoft, the the web version of Office, <laughs> it just reminded me of a story of like uh, yeah. I, I the support I do uh, now. Um, people will call me up and say I can't do I, I can't do anything. I walk over and I'm using the web version of Microsoft Office, and I'm like, you know, to, oh, open Word, you dummy. Um, yeah, no. The only thing I have to add to that is if you are on uh, Big Sur. Um, the app updates will not show in the app store. You have to actually go in there and uh, type in pages, keynote, and uh, then click on that and do the update from there. So they the, didn't show up in Catalina for me. Did you? So if you click on if you click on the actual app in the app store, it will change from open and then switch over to update right away. So if that's uh, yeah, well, the the way I realized that the updates were there before seeing any of the articles was I launched numbers. And I got a dialogue on screen that's, you know, it's, hey, there's an update. Do you want to go oh, to the app yeah. store and get it? Yeah. And, and I did. And then I checked for other updates. Nothing showed up. Um, and then went and looked. And, of course, Pages and Keynote had updates as well. Right. See? So it's not, a, it's not even a big sure bug. It's a bug. It's so. just a bug. There you go. All right. Speaking of bugs, here comes our bugs. discussion on beta. <laughs> uh, first, the uh, story I wanted to hit on was uh, about the HomePod. Um, uh, this is a Mac rumors. Uh, the HomePod beta 2 uh, adds option to select new default services for music, podcasts, and audiobooks. Apple has provided uh, HomePod beta software to a select Apple seed of testers. So very, even, even Morin doesn't have access to this. Unless he does, and I don't know about it. Uh, mm. Release a second version of I'll the survive. HomePod update. Yeah, I figured you would. Uh, so uh, it, it, here in the article, I just show the, the the choices you have. you can actually change your primary service uh, uh, from Apple Music to, to probably uh, Spotify and a lot of others. Um, and uh, you also allow you're, you're also allowed to make changes as far as uh, being able to, to set what audiobooks are played. Probably like uh, 
the, the some of the other services that are out there, um, and as well as uh, giving you good access to, to stuff. So, uh, Jeff, what do you think? I think this is great. Yeah, I, me too. I, I really, I do. Um, the the motives behind doing this, I would like to think it's because Apple knows that people want to have more options and that makes it more likely that they will either get a HomePod or continue to use the HomePod they have. Uh, there's a part of me that does wonder if this is a preemptive move to try and avoid uh, ongoing litigation over... Uh, 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 monopoly practices and, uh, right. and claims that they're strong arming other companies out of the market. But regardless of why it happened, this is great. I, I'm glad to see that option there. Yep. And uh, Warren, your thoughts? My thoughts doesn't really interest me. I just want my uh, my my AirPods Pro to be spatially aware, and I'm waiting for that. And they're still not All spatially right. aware yet, so that's right. a problem. Then we'll, then we'll move on. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so let's uh, dig right into uh, the betas. Um, the Gold Master release, because uh, we got two betas going on right now, iOS 13.6, and besides iOS 14, uh, Apple just released the, the, the GM betas, which is Gold Master uh, of iOS 13.6, iPad OS 13.6, TV OS 13.48, and Watch OS 6.28, and of course Mac as well. Uh, so now this is probably going to be the final rounds of betas. I would think they want to close this out because they can bring the focus over to iOS uh, 14. Um, what do you think, Warren? Um, yeah, it it should be the end. I mean, we keep saying this. You know, for the last like two months, we've been saying this. This is going to be the end of uh, the cycle for uh, for 10, 13, but in a never is uh, never ending cycle. Um, it seems to be the way iOS uh, 10, 13 went uh, for the most part. Um, yeah, what is this car key support for the most part? I think is right. what it is, um, yep. which is I guess what they're pushing out. Um, and Gold Master usually is a week a week before uh, public. So what's today? Monday? Uh, Wednesday? Thursday? It's Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> Tuesday? <or> Wednesday? <laughs> it's pandemic time. It's whatever you want it to be. <laughs> Yes. I think somebody said Blur's Day. It's Blur's Day. Um, so Tuesday and Wednesday, I guess, probably I, I would put my money on uh, yeah. seeing the uh, the final release come out for that. All right. Any thoughts on that, Jeff? I've been running the iOS 13 betas on my 12.9-inch iPad Pro, and it, it's been such a, a, a stable release that I had actually forgotten I was running a beta and, until I got the update today saying, hey, new 13.6 release or update. And um, yeah, so great. I don't, I don't think there's going to be anything that delays this from becoming a public release in, uh, in a few days. Yeah, I'd say by next week we should, be, should have it uh, in our downloads. Um, and then uh, next story, this is in Mac Rumors. Uh, the, Apple has seeded the first betas for the public. So public beta testers, you are out there. Uh, let, let the wild, crazy things begin here. Uh, those of you who had signed up for Apple's beta testing program for public, uh, you now are going to be able to uh, have the certificate, be able to download the public beta uh, from the website, and uh, get, to, get it installed uh, on your devices if you so choose. Again, disclaimer, I always tell you, do not put this on a production device. Again, do not put this on a production device. Yes. You will be un, you'll be unhappy, and then it won't be like Warren, who, who lives on the edge and has no data. Happy. Do it. Do it. There, so, Just do it. Um, so what do you think, Warren? You got the pe the public out here now. And they have real access. Yeah, and it's been quieter than I thought it was going to be. I haven't seen that much going on. I think people are just uh, coming home from work because they just came came out. Um, so uh, I think they're starting on beta two is basically what I read. So they're starting on the second one. And uh, unlike uh, you know uh, you know iOS thirteen when it started out, that was a that was painful. And the, those betas were tough. And the, yeah, it's the first beta. These are, yeah, but these, uh, you know, so far it's been pretty good. Um, 
I think I post, I, I noticed zero difference on all the betas between the watch, the, the phone, and the, uh, on the Mac between uh, the initial release and beta two, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, I was hoping it was gonna fix one app that keeps crashing on me that, that I use, but it hasn't. So um, yeah, I haven't noticed much. Again, back up first, if you're gonna do it, um, don't do it on a production machine. Um, no. The oh, watch. I, well, I mean, do what, <laughs> what, what does Dave Hamilton say? Do don't do what I do. Do what I say, not what I do. I think it's what he says. Um, That's really good advice. Yes, don't, especially for never us. do what yes. Dave does. Just yes, do what he I, says. I, I, I just do what he right. says. I don't. I don't listen to him. Can't play the drums either. Um, but yeah, so back up. Um, I don't think there's a watch one out yet. The watch drop today i thought i thought it was supposed to there was supposed to be a pub this actually was going to be the first time ever that they offered a public beta for watch os 7 okay so with the watch um you know be careful it's like a tattoo that stuff is permanent um yeah, there's no, can't, can't roll back there's no rolling back everything else you can roll back if you need to but once you do the watch you can't roll that back and then you're locked to it because uh the ios uh, your phone won't work well, your watch, if you're on iOS 13, and the watch is on the uh, the new uh, uh, Watch 7, so you got to think about that. Um, but, you know, other than that, you know, this is uh, – the oh, and don't complain to us about the problems. Complain to Apple. Yes. You thought, that's, that's my big advice. People on uh, the, the groups and the Twitters and the Facebook saying, this doesn't work, this doesn't – yes, we know, it doesn't work. You know, tell, tell feedback, so – and uh, Jeff, you have a developer's account like us, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so I, I've been running dev beta on two iPads since the day it, it was released. Okay. It is not on my iPhone because my iPhone is mission critical. It is not on my Apple Watch because that's just a giant bucket of nope, not going there. That's Good. that's a one-way path I am not going to walk down. Um yeah. But with uh, with the developer betas on my iPads, um, and, and I look at this as a beta because that's what it is. I'm very pleased with where the beta is at this point. There's there's stuff that isn't working consistently for me. There's stuff where I can see they probably just slap something in as a placeholder while they work on getting whatever graphics or other elements they need to to, to finish up the feature. And that's fine. Um, uh, Scribble, not all of the features in Scribble are working for me. And I'm not complaining because it's beta. Um, so that's correct. The, the sad thing for me is uh, uh, doing exactly what you should never do, which is read the, the comments on an article. And seeing people saying, this feels rushed. I can't believe they released this. Uh, it doesn't feel finished. And these are people that aren't getting what beta means. I blame Google for this because <laughs> everything that Google releases for for general use is pretty much listed as beta. And so they've instilled this idea that beta is something that is production ready. And, and while I'm very pleased with the state of iOS 14 and Big Sur... I wouldn't put these on any of my production devices. They're they're beta, and uh, exactly I, yeah. But yeah, I I like where we are right now, um, which is great because at this point in iOS 13 and Catalina beta cycle, I was very concerned about when the official releases rolled out, how they would perform, and actually for some people, I'm still telling them don't don't install Catalina. Just you're just mm -hmm. gonna skip it. Don't install Catalina or, or Big Sur. Catalina. Catalina. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. So stay on Mojave. Yeah, if you're on Mojave, stay on Mojave, and then see how Big Sur shakes out when it's a public release, and then decide if you want to upgrade to that. Just but just okay. skip Catalina. You know, gotcha. we're all just you know we're home anyways. I mean, what's you know what's worse that can happen? Just. You know, if if you need, you know, if your phone breaks, we have home phones. We're, we're not leaving the house. I don't yeah. understand this this term home phone. Yeah, what, what are you? It's in, a the eighties. It's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing that I never got rid of. That just uh, wants to sell. Oh, it's right uh, next to your to your VCR. 
the VCR. Yeah, it's a thing. It, it's a thing that wants to sell me my extended car warranty like constantly, all day, every day, five times a day. All right, so uh, that was a good, a good discussion about the the news. Let's uh, move on, and uh, actually, you know, I want I want people to find out more about Jeff. And uh, Jeff, we again appreciate you being here. I know I've no like I said, like I mentioned at the top of the show, you and I met at Max Talk. That was a lot of fun. I'm so glad we got to meet and had a lot of great times and uh, uh, got to know each other. And uh, you're you're great in the, in the Apple community. You obviously had a lot a lot of, a lot of a great career with uh, the Mac Observer, and I always listen to, to you all the time when you were on the the, the daily, daily observations. And they've they've uh, uh, they, you've got some great stuff. And then uh, I think it's. Uh, Good to know. People have known a little bit about you and what uh, what you're doing now. I guess obviously yeah, you're, 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 you said you're a free agent and uh, you want to mm-hmm. uh, looking to be a, go back into podcasting. So go ahead, tell us all about you. Okay, so yeah, I'm I'm back in the free agent market and I, I'm still deciding to a degree what it is that that I want to do. Whatever it is, of course, I'm I'm going to stay in the in the Apple and the Mac community because how could I not? Uh, I am just about ready to launch a new podcast, which, uh, uh, of course I'm excited about. Otherwise, why would I even do it? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, uh, I, I'm keeping a lookout for whatever the right opportunity is because, uh, sure. you know, I, I have a certain skill set that should be exploited in the right ways and, uh, <laughs> and, I, I have the luxury of being able to figure out exactly what that's going to include next. So, yeah. absolutely. And uh, I always done this at a time that we've had a first guest. I know you pretty much have everything in the iOS world. Uh, uh, which iPhone do you have? This will come as a surprise. I'm still rocking an iPhone 10. Okay. I have the 10. That's a good phone. And, well, the reason I say it'll come as a surprise is because people assume that I always have whatever the most current device is. Um, but as each phone has come out since the iPhone 10, I thought that would be really cool to have. And I'm going to wait and see what the next model is. So okay. the iPhone 12, that's probably going to be an, uh, an upgrade that... I just can't pass up. So Warren and I are, uh, we're, we're always ones that get the latest, greatest. So well, Warren buys a MacBook uh, every other day, but that's a whole other story. Maybe, maybe, maybe not for a couple of years at this point, but we'll see how that goes. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Cause oh yeah. He won't be because of uh, Apple Silicon, but anyway, that's a whole other story. Um, and uh, the, uh, uh, and we also, um, uh, we also, we um, also, Go with uh, with uh, iPhone because I trade it in every year. I'm on the trading plan, so um, so it works out well for me um, as far as that goes. So that's why I end up have, being on a new phone every year. So because of that reason. So uh, basically, I guess I'm renting the phone. Is that's usually what people say. You know, I was doing the the rent a phone through AT and T's program, and when uh, when the when Apple rolled out their new phones after the iPhone 10, I got on the website, I was ready to, to place my order. And, uh, and they said, Oh yeah, well, you know, you're going to have to pay us an extra $600. And I'm like, wait, what? Well, there was the, the lag time. So there was, it took longer for the iPhone 10 to come out. Yeah, and, which shortened up the time for for the 10s and with that and and the the price that they were going to charge me for the privilege of giving them back a phone and getting a new one i thought you know an iphone 10s suddenly doesn't seem that valuable to me and then when the 11 rolled out and by that point i paid off my phone I almost got one, and I thought, you know, I don't have a phone payment right now. This <laughs> phone is still working really well, and the only thing I'm looking at on this phone as a reason to upgrade is the camera. Totally valid reason to get a brand new phone. And I almost did it. And I thought, you know, at this point, why don't I just wait a little bit longer and because it's not like I was in a position where I really, really, really had to have a new phone. Yeah. 
So I thought, eh, okay, when the 12 comes out, there'll be something really cool in that, and the, the camera will be even better, and I won't be able to resist. Yeah. And um, iPad, you have, uh, which iPad do you have? I actually have three. Oh, wow. Uh, You're a beta tester. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, and when you spend as, as much time in tech journalism as I did, yeah. you end up getting a lot of equipment because you need to be able to try a lot of different that's, things. That's true. So I have an iPad Mini 4. I have a 9.7-inch iPad Pro and a 12.9-inch iPad Pro. Nice. Which means that, that I also get to have a first-gen and second-gen Apple Pencil. There you go. Let's get to try them both. I, I've got it all covered. You do. And then uh, Apple Watch, you, what series are you on that one? I am on, I've lost track now. Uh, is five the current model? Five's current. I have a four. And four. So I'm on a four. Uh, the five looked really compelling. And then at the same time, I thought, wait a second. If I'm only getting this for the always-on display, that's a really foolish reason for me to upgrade. Right. So uh, we'll see what happens with the next Apple Watch. And then maybe it'll be time to upgrade. Absolutely. And then Apple TV, I'm sure you, you have a 4K. I have, a, I have the HD. But that's because HD. I don't have a, a 4K TV. So That makes sense. Yeah, so I thought, eh, why should I upgrade that? Um, and yes, I have a HomePod. Okay. I've got two. It's... <laughs> Uh, for for MySpace, one is plenty. Yeah. And then a 16-inch MacBook Pro. All right, great. So you are all in. That's why it's great to have you on the show, because you are just going to tell us everything there is to know about Apple. I, I, am, hang with us. I am so committed to uh, to the Apple ecosystem. <laughs> yes, just like us. Uh, what were you going to say, Warren? I said, I said he could hang with us now. So. Yes, he can. Oh man, you know I'm so glad <laughs> that uh, that I passed the test. Although the series the five, test. you know, you got to be in the series five. Actually, I, I was not going to get to. I had to four. I was not going to get to five, uh, except my wife needed something to buy me for my birthday, and it happened to coincide. So I, I told you, gonna, he always finds a way. That is so gonna, romantic. <laughs> I'm not going to pass up a free watch. So, I mean, there's... No, that, that would just be foolish. <sighs> yeah, exactly. Well, thanks. We appreciate you being here, Jeff, and I think it would be, be coming back a lot more times, too. So uh, we should appreciate uh, you uh, coming on the show. And then, yeah, we're, we're having a lot of fun here. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, get back in some of our topics here. Uh, one topic I wanted to touch on, and, and, and people were kind of uh, talking about, we, I think we've talked about beta enough here, so I think we've talked that out for a while here. Um, yes. The... Uh, um, the iPhone 12, obviously there are lots of rumors about the iPhone 12's imminent release, but there's been quite a debate about the fact that Apple's potentially considering not including the charger in the box, which I'm not all surprised because, you know, I could probably go find a box, and I'm sure many of us can, filled with these chargers that we never use. In fact, Apple even sent out a survey to select people, and they had, they, they published that out, uh, uh, asking, what do you do with the charger? Do you use it or do you not use it? Um, and so I wanted to hear, uh, Jeff, what, what your thoughts on this uh, topic is, is because it's uh, definitely going to be interesting to see what happens. My first thought was, holy crap, what are you thinking? Yeah. No. And then my second thought was, wait a second. Before I go all emotional on this, I need to do some due diligence and do some research. And uh, and part of my my holy crap response was because uh, Amazon has been releasing Kindles for a while without chargers, and people weren't understanding what was going on. And before long, they had a Kindle that they actually couldn't use and had no idea why. And uh, and that's that's bad message delivery. Uh, but it turns out that Apple is not an innovator in this space. Right. O2, I think it was O2, did a, uh, uh, a test program, I think it was in 2013, with, uh, with one or two uh, cell phone makers where they, uh, they were selling their phones without chargers. And okay. their plan was, because the, the program actually went really well, it's like 70% of the people buying the phones didn't care because they had chargers. 
Um, and for the other 30%, they were able to get chargers for, for cheap. And so their plan was they were going to phase out chargers with all phones that they sell by 2015. And, uh, and they were totally on track for that. And then it ended up not happening, and I'm not sure why. But the, the notion of selling a phone without a charger, this isn't new. And yeah. apparently it worked really well in the U.K., so I don't like the idea of having a phone sold to me without a charger because what if I'm traveling and I have lost my phone and I have to replace it and, uh, and I'm literally starting from scratch. Do I now have to turn around and go buy a charger just so I can use a, a brand new phone, you know, like salt in the wound? But the reality is I probably have a charger in all of my travel stuff. And True. I have a lot of chargers sitting around. So coming into a smartphone at this point in the game um, without having a charger, you probably already have some sitting around. If you're totally brand new to this, well, now you're going to have to buy a charger. Oh, well, I guess I have to do it. Uh, uh, what were your thoughts on the? Uh, do you think this is a good idea that Apple does this? I mean, obviously, it's all kind of rumory now, but and they also uh, initially said, uh, no, well, Apple didn't say anything. People were saying that initially that maybe we'll cut the cost of the phone. Then they were saying maybe uh, it, without including the charger in the headphones, that it's going to be uh, the same price as last year's model, even though it's going to be a more expensive you know, product. Now they're saying it's going to be more expensive. So then people don't know what the price is going to be. Um, you know, obviously, you know, a lot of people, probably 98% of the people don't care uh, because they already have it. Some people have millions of chargers and, and still care because they just think it's stingy and they like free stuff or <laughs> they don't they don't like to pay for things that they, they don't need to. Uh, you know, Apple could do something like, uh, you know, when you order the phone that, you know, for an extra like $5, you could get the charger um, if you want it. I think if they say you can get it for free, if you buy it, if you're optional, everybody's going to do it just because, hey, free charger. Yeah. But, right. You know, <laughs> but I think if they do it like for a low, you know, like, you know, like five bucks, I think a lot of people won't do it. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't pay the extra five bucks for the charger because I have them. Um, so something like that's not a horrible idea to, 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 to get people from uh, doing that. Uh, and obviously they're talking about the headphones uh, to um, being gone. Um, yeah, I mean, it won't bother me at all. Um, it will bother people. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see what happens. I know, again, like you said, the key word is rumor. It is a rumor. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but Apple did officially send out a survey asking people uh, to, to select few people to asking, to, do, do they really think they're going to need their adapter? So it kind of has some, some, you know, it has some potential realization that it, that's, it's possible they're going to do it. So. Um, uh, next topic I want to talk about real quick is about the Find My app. And I, I've talked about the Find My app lots of times, how valuable it really is. Being able to find your devices just by opening up the app, whether it be on a website, from your, from your iPhone, your iPad, uh, your Apple Watch, and you can actually could find where your device is and be able to uh, open it up. Um, I've got a link in the show notes to an article on Tidbits uh, about, uh, about this, that uh, crowdsourcing to third-party accessories is going to be the availability, which this was kind of a surprising thing to, for me to see because Apple has never been known to open up uh, to, to third-party developers when it comes to their, their technologies, but they, in this case, decided to do this. Um, uh, Jeff, did you, you take a look at this, and what did you think of this? On one hand, I'm surprised. And on the other hand, mm -hmm. this seems like a natural progression of the Find My app or, or the Find My service. Because this, this is another way to really lock people into the Apple ecosystem. You're buying all these other accessories. Now you can can find them with your iPhone. Um, also, this fits in nicely with the the rumor that Apple is going to release their own Tile competitor. Um, yeah. But hey, if Tile can link directly into Apple's Find My app, and now I have a yeah. single repository for tracking all of my devices, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it is. 
it is. We'll we'll see. So we'll see where it goes. Uh, 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 any thoughts on that, Warren? No, just um, you know, sit and see how it goes. I know Apple's uh, fine. My system is it uses all sorts of Wi-Fi's and Bluetooth and the the low uh, the low the low frequency Bluetooth, and uh, that's why right now it's so much better than tile is because um even though there's no um you know the idea of it is even though there's not going to be a gps in it or, or cellular uh system in there or, or something like that it basically will find any ios device in the wild and and kind of ping its location through its apple servers and find it and tell it where it is um so just the fact that everybody has an apple phone and, um where some kind of Apple device is going to help um so it should be a good, uh, you know, it's good for people who uh, wants to add uh, trackers to pretty much anything, which is probably not a bad idea yeah. at this point. All right. And then um, next topic I wanted to bring up, and I just actually found out about this today. Uh, I know, Warren, you're a subscriber to SetApp, uh, the great Mac app service that gives you a huge suite of apps. Are you as well, uh, Jeff? Of course. I figured as much. <laughs> uh, and... Um, I was uh, super thrilled to find out today that uh, that um, SetApp has now opened up a beta testing uh, process. Uh, you can you can put your SetApp app into beta, for, uh, and then you also then you also can now download and test iOS apps in SetApp. I'm like, this is so cool. This is going to even add even more incredible value to what SetApp can do. If you can do not only your Mac apps, which the, the catalog itself is just mind mind-boggling how much great stuff they have mm -hmm. but now that, that they can do it with ios right now they've got five apps that they've they started off with and, and uh, uh my node was one of them i i had the uh the uh, and that that's a, a, a it assesses all your uh, thoughts and processes with a my node and then uh you had the pace which was a clipboard reader and there's a sql pro, pro studio if you're a sql the database editor um and then uh there's a, there's five total so far but the whole process is so cool. All you have to do is you go into setup in your Mac and then you open up, there's a section there. It says available, uh, iOS apps, click that. Then these five come up, you click the app. And then all of a sudden there's a button there, iOS app, click it, then it has a QR code. So then you take your iPhone, you scan the QR code, um, and then it installs it because it brings you to the app store and it installs the app onto your, onto your iPhone. And then you, there's a the little button you click and it says uh, you, you gotta scan it's a second time this will open up the, to the full version because it only gives you the trial version if you don't do that um scan that and voila you have an app that's on your ios device um that uh, is uh readily available and i'm hoping to see a lot more apps that come into this catalog um and uh worked super well i, I was i was very impressed I, I just did this within the last hour so uh, uh so it's all real new to me uh jeff what i mean what what do you think about this i assume this was a surprise to you until you found out about this uh, uh today it, it was a surprise to me and um uh yeah so i i heard about this just a little while ago today haven't had a chance to try it out yet and mm -hmm. the funny thing is i saw in the settings a day or two ago the the new beta option yeah. And uh, and I was busy at the time, and I thought, oh, I need to come back and check this out. So, <laughs> in reality, I I should know much more about this at this point. But uh, but okay. here we are. But the whole idea of being able to do the whole setup thing on my iPhone or iPad is very compelling because setup has proven that they they have a model that works well. So I like being able to carry that over to the to the iPhone and the iPad. And I think it's so cool that they figured out how to make this work without having to sideload. So that means yeah. there's no hacks. No. And uh, yeah. and as, as long as they're not having to do some sneaky under, under the hood thing with provisioning, um, I, I think this is great. And, and if they were having to do something with provisioning, then, uh, then I could see Apple at some point shutting this whole thing down. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. For but sure. since that's not what's happening, um, this is great. I am looking forward to seeing more apps show up in a uh, uh, set app for iOS. And I think this has a high likelihood of being very successful, just like it is on the Mac. It is. And, and as I described how it works, I mean, I'm looking at it now. You don't even have to. You can go and get the app now and then just go to step two and scan the to, to make it the full version, like the the app Paste, which is a smart clipboard uh, viewer that 
works on both Mac and iOS, um, you can uh, you can scan the the second code and then it just makes it a full version. So you don't even have to go to that first, that first step. You go to the second step. But this is going to be interesting too, as I think a lot of, along the lines of with Apple Silicon and Mac and, and iOS and and Mac OS apps are going to work uh, together. Uh, app developers are, can can come up with these apps and and now they've got now they've got this platform already uh, before the the Apple Silicon even comes out. Uh, but then uh, uh, when Apple Silicon does come out, they'll already have these apps ready to go and have them on both platforms. So, yep, I think that's great. Yeah. Any thoughts, so Warren? I know it's still new to you as well. Again, no, it's, here, it's, I am, it's, here I was feverishly getting it installed, so I was able to bring the information to everybody today. So I am uh, I'm excited for it. Instead, app is a is a quality app. Um, yeah, it is. I'm a little worried that uh, the, uh, Apple's going to Sherlock them eventually with the, the Mac App Store and the unified thing. And I could see them, you know, if they wanted to do a subscription app thing in their little world, uh, like Apple Arcade, I could kind of see them doing that at some point, too, which is what Setup is doing. And um, yeah. that would be uh, that would be interesting because a lot of people... Um, you know, they really are trying to get people in the uh, the Mac App Store uh, developers, and the, the developers seem to avoid it like the plague for for many reasons. Um, mainly because uh, there's other ways to get their apps on the Mac other than the uh, the Mac App Store, unlike iOS. So um, yeah, for now, I, I want to see more stuff. I don't know what I want to see on it yet, but um, yeah. you know, I definitely you'll see know more it stuff. when you see it. Yes, yeah, pretty will. much. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll do an inventory in my head. Um, but yeah, if you, if you don't have set up now, get set up. It's it's, yeah, it's, you do. it's definitely worth it. worth it. Yeah, it's worth it. We'll put a link in the show notes so anybody can uh, can sign up, and uh, uh, we'll uh, definitely uh, uh, talk more about this as uh, as more apps get added. So, um, getting close to the end of the show here, but we got a couple tips here, and then uh, uh, both uh, myself and Jeff have some uh, app picks. So we want to get to that uh, before we. Re- wrap things up here um the first tip i have here is uh i know everybody's been very active using zoom we're on zoom right now recording this show and zoom has become a phenomenon it's it's just so many people are using zoom now um and they did add a feature which i was really excited about anytime i do presentations that you actually can share your iphone or i or your ipad screen during a zoom meeting now the way i would normally do it is i use an app called reflector and i would share my uh, my iPhone on the screen because I do a lot. I do a lot of presentations for my Apple user group, uh, but sometimes you may want to demonstrate it and not have to deal with any third parties. Well, now you can do it. Um, so what you basically do is you actually go in and make sure your iPhone and your and and your Mac are on the same network. Uh, when you go in to share your screen, you're going to see an option in in Zoom that says iPhone iPad. Oh, how cool! Click the button. Then if you don't have the plugin installed, it will require a plugin to be installed on your Mac. You install that. And voila, you've got a mirrored iPhone or iPad that uh, that's going to now work within Zoom. So it saves you on all the steps of having to share this later, and it works pretty well. I was very impressed. And when you share your screen uh, in Zoom and uh, you're able to do this. Uh, did you guys, Jeff, did you know this? Did you able to do this? You just totally turned me on to something new. I, yeah. I, I've been doing like like you have, using Reflector, Reflector yeah. which works great. I love uh, Reflector, yeah. Yeah, but for for people that that aren't already using a Reflector and they need to show their iPhone or iPad in a Zoom meeting, this is great. I, I, I'm I'm glad to see this show up, and it makes sense. Sure. Streaming, uh, video conferencing services, the this is the new normal for everyone. So. It sure is. So enhancing these services so that they they meet people's needs is good. Yeah. Uh, any thoughts, Warren, on this? Uh, no, I was just wondering if we should try it now, if that's a bad idea. It's probably a bad yeah, idea. Yeah, it's a bad idea. You, you always <laughs> want to do something when it's going to cause some production issues. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> what, I am, what I am curious is if you uh, turn on your camera and do this, will it like be like a, uh, the camera on the phone and you share the screen? Will it do yeah, the... it'll show it. Just like Reflector That's, does. But that'd be cool. That is yeah. cool. Reflector yeah, does so. it now. Well, I can, if I turn on my camera on Reflector, I can. you'd be able to uh, see, me, see me through the, the image on the iPhone. So that's handy because when people, you know, you say you want to see something and you don't feel like dragging a laptop around the house with you, uh, that's, 
Yep. That's the way to go. Uh, now you can do uh, a two-shot show. There you I go. could, uh, and to prove I am wearing pants. Yes. <laughs> um, all right, let, uh, we're just going to hold it to that tip, and then uh, now let's uh, go ahead and let's move on to, to some act picks that we have here. Um, Jeff, I'm going to let you go first, you, since you are a guest, and, uh, and uh, you've got two that you put down here. Yes. Uh, wh- one of them is new-ish, like in the last, I want to say, two or three months, and it's called Tot. T-O-T, and it's a it's an app that you can use on your Mac and your iPhone and iPad, and think of it like a uh, uh, a notepad, but it also does more, but it's also really simple and streamlined, so it's not a bloated thing, and uh, and you can have a, a, how many notes total? Um, I actually have to count. One, two, three, four, five, six notes total, and uh, and think of them as as a transient workspace. So when you're done doing whatever it is that you need to keep track of, the list you need to make, the code you're writing, the article you're writing, whatever it is, then uh, you just delete it and put something else in that note. And it's in tr- instantly synchronized between all your devices that you have taught on. And it's one of those apps that when it came out, my, my first thought was, this is brilliant. I'm going to buy it and then install it and decide if I actually need it. It's just that brilliant. And I think it's like $19, but... It's uh, really? Wow. It's, uh, I mean... Good, good for them for charging yeah, nineteen dollars for it. Nineteen ninety nine, yeah. It's totally worth, totally worth twenty bucks. I've gotten so much more value than twenty dollars out of this since I've been using it. Okay, yeah, the Icon Factory. They're a great, they're a great developer. Yes, um, they got a lot of other great apps too. No, good, good pick. And then your second pick. My second pick. This is a, this is a pick that's available in uh, Setup. So, is if you, oh, if you want to grab it from there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, so this is a Mac app, but the reason I picked it is because in addition to to giving you data about your Mac's charge on its battery, it will give you the charge for all the other Apple gear that connects via Bluetooth. So, okay. uh, so I have a list in my menu bar showing me the charge level on my iPhone and all of my iPads in one place. And if one of those devices' batteries gets low, then I'll get a little notification on screen on my Mac letting me know so I can make sure I go and plug in that iPad. So it's a great tool for keeping track of of, uh, the battery level on all your devices. And uh, I I tried it out just on a whim when it was added to Setapp, which is one of the great things about Setapp because you can do that. Yes. And that whim, about 10 minutes after I installed it, I realized, no, this isn't a whim. This is a permanent place in my menu bar now. That's awesome. All right. And then um, I've got two apps. Uh, my first one is actually from our friends at Adobe, because, of course, you know, we love Adobe, right? Um, Adobe uh, Photoshop Camera. Um, they actually came out. They, they, they've jumped into the smart capture camera world uh, with camera apps. Um, you know, they say it's an intelligent camera app that lets you add the best filters and effects to your photos. So, again, another, another way of uh, being able to take pictures, you, you got uh, you got some real-time Photoshop effects that you can do when you take with the pictures within it. Um, it does work with social media, so they've they've really uh, they've really gone in and, and done a lot of stuff here. Um, and it is actually actually absolutely free. And then really the only in-app purchase that they have here is if you wanted to have Creative Cloud storage. Who mm. needs that when you've got storage? Um, so. Honestly, this is free, that which is great because uh, that's unusual for Adobe. They always want to charge for something here, um, but uh, you do you do have a pretty pretty powerful camera here. And I, I just found out about this uh, today, so I have not a lot of time to play with it. But wanted to be as an app pick this week, so you could uh, uh, so you could check it out. Uh, but that this is a Photoshop 
camera and it's Adobe. We've got a link in the show notes for that as long as long as, as well as all of our picks. And this one I actually found out about today as well. This is uh, our, our friend, Mr. Mike LaPlante uh, posted this in the Mac voices uh, Facebook group. Um, this is an, a, an audio app. It's called Dolby 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 on recording audio and video. And what it does is it, it actually, it's a, it's a, it's a, the only free audio recorder and sound editor for voice music video and more with the cutting edge Dolby, Dolby uh, audio technology. Uh, so this, this has got some pretty interesting things here with uh, audio editing. I was, I'm impressed here. I mean, it's got the, the S es and the uh, stereo widening, and you can do a lot of effort, effortless audio uh, per- perfection. I wonder if I should edit the podcast in this app, I'll tell you. Um, and uh, so you've got a lot of great uh, uh, things with, with the audio sharing uh, your voice and music recordings to fans. You can do it right from to SoundCloud to Instagram or Facebook, and you can live stream from it. This is a pretty powerful app and I can't believe this thing is free. Absolutely free. Uh, this is made by Dolby, uh, Dolby cool. laboratories. Yeah, this is this is phenomenal. I mean, and again, I just I just found out about it today. Thanks, Mike. Uh, shout out to Mike Lapont uh, for uh, for uh, putting this out there because I, I I'm so glad I, I put this as an app pick here. So Mike is uh, great. So he's he is great, and I miss I miss having him. I'm gonna have him back on the show again soon here. Uh, so uh, those are my two app picks. I think uh, I think that's great. Did you have anything, Warren? No, I think Dolby was a fraggle. Just Dolby. I run by my tongue. I know, uh, but I think. Dolby. 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 It might have been, one of them sounds like a fraggle. All right. No, no, these are, <laughs> these are, uh, these are good. I'm going to, uh, I, I like the idea of the, um, the photo on the first one, Adobe, because uh, yeah. I got to look at it. I'll, I'll do it for the next show. I downloaded, I did download something and I'll talk about it. Basically yeah. it's a, it, it takes a picture um, that, that uh, it's optimized. It, it's, it's to create wallpapers for your phone is what it is. And it's basically uh, the photo app that makes it uh, right. look good on your iPhone. Um, I'll get the, uh, we'll yeah. talk about that next week. I like it. Next, next show. Yeah. yeah. Um, and with that, we've, lo- we've all learned so many great things today. So things we all didn't know. So I'm <clears> so glad that, that you know, had you on the Jeff, uh, on the show today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up and we'll get, we'll get, we'll, uh, we'll uh, be right back with you here, but uh, yes, let's wrap things up here. That is a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, feedback at in touch You can follow us on Twitter at in touch with iOS and you can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple podcasts and many others. But uh, the best place to go is go to our website at InTouchWithOS.com. All the links, all the ways to listen to us are there. I am Dave Ginsburg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Warren, where can they find you? It's not important. That's Jeff Facebook. Where you can find them. Yeah, Facebook. Is good. <laughs> thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. And I'll tell everybody where we, they can find you. Well, first, thanks for having me on. This has been a lot yes. of fun. A blast. And uh, and and I'm actually tied up in Warren's closet right now. Please send help. <laughs> uh, you, you and uh, a few other people. So. Yeah, it's getting crowded in here. Yeah. Uh, uh, but you can find me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Jay Gamut, both places. All right, Jeff. Thanks again for being here. Really appreciate it. This has been awesome. Um, Thank you. Yes, it was a lot of fun. And uh, thanks, Thank everybody, you. for listening. Yep. We hope you enjoyed the show. Um, and uh, we'll be back again next time. And uh, we'll talk again soon.